Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to build a kindling cracker out of scrap metal and some rebar. So here we are in the garage, uh, just getting my welding table and all the gear set up. Um, nice thing about this table is it's on, on wheels, so it's pretty mobile. Um, and I can wheel it uh, right there in front of my garage doors uh, and still be inside, but uh, most of the sparks and smoke and everything is able to make its way out the door. All right, so today I'm working with uh, some three quarter inch rebar. Um, I had quite a few sticks of this left over from building my house, and I'm going to just break it down here into. Um, some chunks. So I originally cut these uh, eight pieces for the for the base and for the top at, at 12 inches but when I put them together it just seemed like it was way too big um, so I eventually cut those down to, to eight inches. Um, so you're gonna need eight eight inch pieces, two 24 inch pieces and four um, I used about five inch pieces but that's just what I had left over for scrap. So you could uh, you could use a four inch piece, five inch piece, six inch piece, anywhere in there, because um, they're just going to provide a little support for the legs. So here I am uh, using these magnetic 90 degree angle uh, welding clamps um, to help me tack up the base here. Uh, the, I'm going to do the same process for the top. And uh, like I said, these are eight inch pieces. Just welding them up, keeping them as square as I possibly can. It's not too critical, but any chance you get to do the work correctly, then you might as well try. I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and like this video. Also, any of the products that I use in this video, I have links to in the description below. Not a fabulous welder at all, uh, but I do, do know how to burn a rod, so... Um, wasn't too concerned about uh, cleaning this all the rust off of this. A, it would have taken forever, um, and B, with uh, as much weld as I'm going to put on this, I'm not worried about about the strength of it or porosity or anything like that. So just cleaning off the slag, um, clean up the surface a little bit. The one negative of uh, stick welding is uh, all the cleanup, all the spatter. You can see that on the table there. Um, so now, now that I got everything tacked with the 6011. I'm coming back with the 7014 um, and, and just laying a weld around the entire uh, surface. I'm going to change out this cutoff wheel for a flap disc. It'll make um, cleaning the ends of these rebar up and getting the rest of that slag off super easy and, and uh, kind of make those welds look a lot better than they uh, actually are. I think I remember. Uh, my welding teacher in, in community college always telling us that uh, a grinder and paint make a welder what he ain't. So I am uh, definitely adhering to that uh, old adage there on, on this project. It's been a long time, probably about 10, 12 years since since I've done any uh, amount of welding. So this is kind of like a little project for me to kind of reacclimate myself into welding and to uh, um, kind of redevelop those skills that I've lost. So here I am uh, using this little 90 degree support angle, uh, that magnetic support, putting on one of the two uprights. 
Um, and these are each 24 inches long. Checking it with a level. Uh, not too happy with it as you can see there. So I'm going to break it off, reset, um, and, and try to get a little bit better of a shot at it on this one. Alright, so I'm finally happy with it. You can see there, that as that weld cooled, um, it, it pulled that, that up right over. So I'm going to tweak it here. Give it a little, give it a little bend, get her to where I want it. And that looks pretty good. So, finish up tacking. Come back to the other side, tack it down, and that'll uh, help pull it back the other way a little bit. So I'm going to get the other upright on here. Get it straightened up. It's kind of difficult with the ribs on the rebar to, to get it where you want it. Um, so if you can get a decent tack on it, um, it, it really allows you to tweak it a little bit better. Just double checking to make sure I got these. Uh, somewhat in the same spot because there is going to be a cross member uh, that has to go between each one and that's going to hold the blade of the kindling cracker. So, didn't like that one either. Go ahead and break that tack off. Just kind of eyeballed it here. Um, gave it a couple tacks. Now I'm just going to use this level and, and get it where I want her. So like I said, those ribs kind of they kind of mess with you, depending on where you're gonna land on them. And uh, after a couple tries, I got it. Just gonna test fit that top piece up there, see how it looks. Um, so that's what it is, right there. It's a pretty basic project, uh, and yeah, the longest part for for me was. Probably doing all the the cutting of the rebar and uh, the piece of I ended up using a piece of a old lawnmower blade for the actual blade of the cracker. So getting everything cut up. Um, here are these uh, little support pieces I'm talking about. These are about four or five inches. Um, any length is going to work for you. It's just to give uh, those long 24 inch legs that are coming up off the base. Just to give them a little bit more rigidity, because uh, this thing's going to take a pounding. Because um, what you're going to be doing is setting a log in there and and beating on it with a little mini sledgehammer, and uh, so it's, it's going to take a beating. So I I definitely want to make sure this thing was was stout and um, could take it. That's why I, I used three quarter inch rebar instead of half. Um, I had some half entry and I had three quarter. And I also have a, a stick of one inch, um, but I, I really didn't feel like having to grind through uh, one inch rebar to cut all this. And um, to be honest, that was, I think, overkill. I think three quarters the the right size for this project. Um, it's not going to bend like half inch if you miss hit on it. And it's, um, I think it just gives you a, a, a sturdier product. So just getting these these little support legs welded on here. Um, definitely doing a lot more welding on them than I needed to, but I kind of wanted to blend those tops. I tried uh, cutting a bevel on one, um, but when I got down to it, it it took me you know five minutes to cut a bevel, and I wasn't about to spend um, another half hour of time cutting bevels on all these little support legs. So I'm just gonna blend it in with a whole bunch of weld and. Uh, just kind of make it look decent. Got a little undercut there. Um, like I said, uh, this whole project I was tweaking my settings and my rod angles and 
uh, you know, the depth that I was holding the rod into the weld. And uh, there I am, using, using every bit of that rod that I possibly could. No waste on this project. So, there's a good, uh, good shot of what the wells look like here if you hit them with that flap disc. I think they turn out pretty well. Um, and I, I'm going to paint this whole thing black uh, to give it a nice, you know, finished product. Uh, this is actually a, a gift that I'm making for somebody for Christmas. Um, so, I, I wanted to do a pretty decent job on it. Clean off that slag there. Like I said, that's the worst part of uh, stick welding, but uh, I, I do like stick welding. I've tried MIG once. It was it turned out okay. Uh, it's it's a heck of a lot easier and cleaner than uh, than running sticks. So I can definitely see the appeal. So there, I hit a little. A little porosity, just weld it over top of it there. Um, just laying laying these on thick here, just filling in these big gaps that we got. So it's doing a little clean up here, hitting everything with a wire brush, and fill in that weld there in these corners. Um, you know, if you're enjoying this video at all. Uh, Please like and subscribe. And if you want to check out the the products that I used, um, I'll have links to those in the de description below. So here I am, uh, I got an old uh, lawnmower blade, it's about 3 8 inch thick, uh, it's pretty stout, um, these are commercial blades off of a commercial mower that I have, so um, plenty thick and I got a, quite a few of them laying around, been saving them just for, uh, figured at some point you know they'll call me the chunk of, chunk of metal so um, Turned out this was a, a good opportunity to finally cut one up and use one. Um, so it turned out that it was almost the perfect size and I could get that full metal chunk. Um, so I'm just whacking off those little ears there and then uh, I'm going to put a curved profile on it. Um, you look at the commercial kindling crackers, they have uh, a curved blade to them as well. I figure that's probably most likely because um, you're increasing your force over a, a smaller area of the wood, uh, letting you, you split it better than if you were just had a straight blade straight across. Um, you can think of it the same way as you know most axes have, have a curve to them as well. So just kind of using that same principle and uh, just a touch of extra effort here goes a long way, I think. So I just uh, hand drew a little profile to it. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna be grinding a, an edge on this, so that'll help take out any imperfections. And um, like I said, just this is just practice. I'm not going for perfection here. Uh, when you're doing a project like this, if you're kind of following it pretty closely with three-quarter rebar and and doing all this this grinding and cutting, um, I went through uh, one cutoff disc on this project and uh, probably about 30 welding rods. 
So here's a where I'm attaching a piece of rebar on the bottom to kind of stiffen up this blade and that's going to be my cross member that I'm going to weld up to uh, the two legs those two 24 inch legs that we got there and uh, you can see there uh, bottom of the screen there was a kind of a big gap there that I got to fill in where it wasn't quite long enough that middle section of the lawnmower blade um, but I'm going to come run quite a few beads here A to kind of create a little bevel so that the wood splits out past that rebar kind of makes it a little ramp um, and also I just wanted the practice of of running some long beads this is about eight inches so uh, it's great practice and uh, get to kind of get back to my old days of just running beads left and right running beads Not a bad weld there. I think it looks pretty decent. Um, this is still 7014. I think this is just a sweet camera shot, seeing all that spatter going everywhere and the way that uh, the smoke and the, the bright light there. I just think it's a pretty cool shot. I was hoping I would uh, get a clean enough bead where that slag would start curling up. Um, used to get that every once in a while back when I was taking classes at the community college but unfortunately didn't didn't have the skill in me this time um, so it is what it is so here I am putting a profile on the blade gonna just grind this out get it get it nice and sharp um, with this grinding wheel then I think it's, I'm gonna switch over to the flap disc to clean it up and, and kinda get a little bit more of a profile on it So there I am, just hitting those welds, just trying to just, all I do is want to just kind of smooth them out, that way they, um, they kind of, the, the log won't catch on them at all when, when you're going to split it, and it um, is going to help push that, that wood apart and um, break that kindling up that much quicker. So that's, that's the main reason why I put so many welds, so many beads on there, but uh, also it's just good practice for me. So we're hitting it here with the flap disc, just uh, getting it that much sharper. I think this is an 80 grit disc on there. Um, I hadn't used flap disc for until probably a couple months ago, and man, I I am definitely a huge fan of uh, how they work. So here I am getting the. Uh, Cross member welded in place. Up top there you see I used a little uh, piece of a welding rod as a spacer because I cut it just a hair short so um, not too big of a deal. Uh, we'll definitely be able to fill, it, fill the gap. So the way this worked out um, I was able to also instead of just welding that bottom piece of rebar to those cross members I was able to weld up on the blade and I think that's definitely gonna a help with rigidity and and B just make this thing almost bomb proof it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be quite durable so just didn't like where that that how that looked right there I wanted to Fill it in a little bit, left a little bit of a crater. Just wanting to blend that corner in. Uh, and I'm coming back and I'll hit it with the flap disc. And I just want everything to be smooth on this blade so that whenever you're going uh, to split your kindling, yeah, that, that wood's not going to catch anywhere and, and hang up.
it's all looking pretty good here um, having a little trouble striking my arc didn't didn't have good ground and sometimes when you're when you're working with rusty metal like this uh, I normally just have my uh, ground clamp on the table but you gotta actually move it to the piece so this is probably the toughest part of this for me is uh, welding this center hole um, I've always struggled with trying to, to fill holes and uh, and not blow through the product but um, I eventually got it done I got it got it filled in and um, ground it down I like to look uh, pretty neat. So I had these uh these little tabs that I had cut off from another project, um, put a hole in them and weld them down. That way you can screw this down to a log. Look at this thing, man! It's cracking this wood pretty easily. That was that was a little tough because it didn't have good good wood to whack on, but um, it, it's gonna work. It's gonna be safe. 